Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 16, 2017, here on the Rancho. And good morning to all of you, and good morning, Missy Jen. Good morning, Missy Jen. Good morning, T. <clears throat> As you're watching this, it's been exactly one week since the uh, Great Santa Rosa fire broke out overnight. Last Sunday night, about uh, 9.40 p.m., the first reports came in from residents way up on the hills uh, to the east of Santa Rosa that sounded like a transformer had exploded and there was uh, supposedly sparking wires. And although the cause of the fire has not been officially designated yet, just bear in mind that last Sunday night into Monday had 60, 70 mile an hour winds over the ridges there and that kind of weather with trees, you certainly have a recipe for down power lines. And it'll probably turn out that that's exactly what uh, caused the great Santa Rosa fire. Could it have been avoided? Who knows? The story is still to be written, but we thought we would reflect this week and kind of uh, just relive and get some of the conclusions. I know, Missy Jen, the first time you heard about it was early Monday morning. I get up at 5 o'clock. And uh, on my way out the door, because I had received all kinds of frantic uh, text messages to back up medical information to the cloud, make sure everything's up. Two hospitals are closed down. People were being evacuated like crazy. I mean, it... it when that hits you in the morning, you have no way to wrap your head around the scope of what's going on. So I told Missy Jen what I poked my head in and said, look alive, there's, you know, just, you know, don't go crazy, but there's a fire. Yeah, there's a fire. What can you do out there? Well, there's a fire, put it out. Yeah, I was just didn't think of that. They just I said, just be on your toes, you know, and of course that meant you couldn't go back to sleep that, uh, that morning. <clears throat> but then I did... But then I did uh, uh, check real quick on my, and I heard that it was actually a fire of, gra of grander scale. And then, of course, I didn't go back to sleep. It was so. impossible. So Jen, Jen probably had the first look at it because I immediately rushed on to work because I knew I had a lot of, I had a, a lot of patient records and things that I had to hit to make sure everything was in a safe area. Well, you said it was smoke in the streets. Yeah, it was smoke in the streets. There were limbs down. <clears throat> I haven't even so. I haven't even put the video up of that first morning as I walked and uh, stepped over top of massive trees that had been uh, knocked down by the wind and uh, somebody had come through in the night and cut them with a chainsaw it wasn't until i was walking back and got more information uh you know that i suddenly <laughs> realized the scope of it and hit the uh, got home and grabbed the van and went out there while the you know incredibly all the access was still open to a lot of places and was able to go out there and although i couldn't see actually what was burning and had an, it didn't really couldn't place the landmarks because the the smoke was so dense and there was so much panic breaking out all around me that the uh, sirens were just, you know, it was a, it's the kind of thing that probably breeds PTSD down the road for a lot of, uh, for a lot of people in this uh, community. But you've then followed through during the week with the uh, videos. You saw the swath yeah. of destruction that cut <clears throat> through. So a lot of people have asked us, can you defend the rancho? against that kind of fire and i don't know what missy jen's conclusion is but in my mind it's indefensible to uh you we know we have the neighbor here with these big tall trees <clears throat> when they catch fire i would envision they will fall over even if they don't fall over all that stuff will fall and rain all over the place <clears throat> the tinders and everything and just set the whole place ablaze. We'll actually set the whole neighborhood ablaze, just those six, seven trees here, the redwood trees. Yeah, well, it's very likely. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and this will go up in a blaze of glory uh, so fast that you couldn't even 
But I need to get the water hose on. Especially if it's driven by winds that just are flash mm -hmm. burning yes. everything. No so no I, uh, you know, we picked up a few. We wanted to have the mementos. And, of course, you guys saw early on the uh, melted piece of guardrail aluminum and the uh, sprinkler uh, spring mechanism for uh, the watering system in Fountain Grove. And uh, our last addition was just a simple door jam uh, striker plate off of the uh, America's Value uh, Inn. Uh, just a couple little mementos of uh, the events that are happening. And, you know, walking through the Kmart and looking at the Kmart yesterday, and especially with Spooky walking through that motel and seeing where that family had just literally fled food out on the table and uh, you know the manager had just and his family had just gone it was an image that's going to haunt me <laughs> of course this morning we're still about the 50 percent uh containment level of a lot of these fires but things seem to be well under control but the answer is no i don't think that the rancho can be defended against fire it's too you know we can do everything in the world but unless your neighbors are doing everything and it's useless we are packed in so tight the density of santa rosa is so extreme especially as you get into the more economically challenged areas that uh, people are triple stacked on top of each other there's just really no chance to defend this so the the real thrust becomes on making sure that you can grab the stuff that you need to grab to evacuate in a hurry because there's going to be a lot of tales told <laughs> of things that were lost and it's very hard to put lives back together again this has become the largest wildfire uh, in the history of california not in terms of maybe the area that encompassed although they've been huge with lots of different fires that are still going as of uh, as of this morning but in terms of the property loss we're well over one one to one and a half billion dollars the city's gonna it's not going to be the same here with the tax base uh, a large part of the uh, property tax base has been wiped out in the very wealthy areas there's going to be a lot of challenges and things and we've said it before missy jen and i have been in an observational mode here We've not been running around and, uh, you know, the shelters are turning everybody away that wants to help and volunteers and food and clothing. And uh, again, our concern remains one month from now, six months from now, what are things going to be like at Christmas time and at uh, February, the dark, uh, dark days of February and the rainy, <clears throat> rainy, dreary days. That's where I think people can really shine in that type of uh, you know, situation. So that's certainly Missy Jen's and my goal. But as I've said before, to leave that thorough trail of documentation of this fire has also been something that's going to help people uh, when they look back and the story is written of this terrible week that we never expected to happen. Um, that's for sure. But my main takeaway from all of it is expect the impossible when it comes to fire. I never knew that fire could move one football field every three seconds. That's how fast the fire was roaring through Coffee Park and places like that. I never believed that a fire could race <laughs> downhill that quickly. I never believed that a fire could jump city streets and, and, and major highways. US 101 and yet go to the other side and start a whole new wave of disaster on the other side the uh, west side of the city I've come to respect that fire can do anything it can do things that you would never expect it to do so make sure that your smoke detectors are always working make sure that you're tied into your local authorities your sheriff your city police the emergency the emergency they have websites that you can go on and just up and just punch in text your number and zip code or your area to these sites and then you can be alerted 
uh, you can follow things that are going on. This city was caught flat-footed at uh, midnight on Monday, midnight into early Monday morning. There were tens of thousands of people that just fled with the clothes on their uh, on their back and were unprepared. So we've taken a big, big lesson <clears throat> from that. Any concluding thoughts on from you, Missy Jen, on as we reflect on this uh, this very violent. I think it's definitely also good to be prepared with having your paperwork in order, having your most important documents and documents always somewhere together in a case for in, in case of an emergency that you can just grab it and it's all in there and you can go. You know, last thing you want is at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning to be stumbling around when you're not thinking properly and the sheriff's department or the fire department's just banging on your door, evacuate, evacuate, right. fire, get out now. You're not going to have time to, to really think things out. And I realize not everybody lives in a dry place like we do. But uh, certainly a lot of people do, and it's lessons that have not been lost on us. Also, you can do a defense perimeter around your house, the 12-foot rule of having no timber, no brush around it. <clears throat> and uh, that really helps. Yeah. But in these cut type of so. conflagrations with high wind driving a fire, there's really nothing, nothing that can be done uh, at all. Our, our fire department was literally overwhelmed in the first in the first hour of a week long fight that line had just crumpled in that first hour and there was nobody else you know there was this, the small departments in Petaluma and Windsor and Roner Park they just you know it was it was like putting a drop of water in an ocean it just wasn't sufficient enough to overcome what was going on so you will be the first line of the defense. You will be the ones deciding what you're going to do if fire breaks out in your community. Finally, thank you all again for your wonderful wishes. Yes, the Rancho's standing. We're happy here, of course, but we're saddened for the loss that we have witnessed this week, the loss that you've seen on the videos that uh, we have shared it's been at times horrifying and shocking. At other times, it's been incomprehensible to, to, to take in the scope of the, the horrific damage that was done to the heart of wine country here in Santa Rosa. Anyway, it is a new week. We thank <clears throat> you for being along. Yeah. More normal videos are starting this week. We'll be wrapping up the uh, fire coverage for sure. Uh, because there's really not a lot more I want to do, but we will periodically do videos and cover the recovery effort. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. We love you guys. Have a great week. Yeah.